got Barbara Carpenter, whose letter was read by uh, Hilde Angus. I'm here today to make some corrections to the record from the November 6th meeting. Thank you, Supervisor Angus, for reading that into the record. Who, after reading that letter, she made a comment to Carrie Asel saying she doesn't want to be involved. People should send their uh, inquiries to somebody else. I know um, that our district director, uh, Valerie Medina, uh, sent a letter to you stating that I want right, But to it has continue. to go through the party chairwoman. That's just the process. I don't want, I don't want to, direct, to be in direct with, uh, notification with the district directors, the PCs. That's not my job. So so she just uh, she just contradicted herself because what she did was she read a letter from Barbara Carpenter. I, I did receive thank you for me, I did receive a letter that wanted to be read into the record uh, from Barbara Carpenter from Kingman. So as we just heard, uh, this person Hilde Angus she says one, she actually says one thing, but she does the complete opposite of what she says she doesn't want to do. I, I did receive, thank you for me, I did receive a letter that wanted to be read into the record uh, from Barbara Carpenter from Kingman. Uh, Valerie Medina uh, sent a letter to you stating that I want right, but to But it has continue. to go through the party chairwoman. That's just the process. Our current assessor wants increased taxes and has no qualms about lying in court or to the Board of Supervisors. Can you imagine? An Arizonan who wants to go in front of the Board of uh, Supervisors, in front of a city council, in front of a town council, in front of a committee hearing, and criticize their elected officials. They'll never be able to do that if they have to fear defamation. And has no qualms about lying in court or to the Board of Supervisors. Defamation charges. It's incredibly dangerous. It's a slippery slope, and it would be detrimental and disastrous truly for democracy if Jeannie Kench will lie to them can you trust her with your property values can you imagine the damage that would do in public discourse can thank you supervisor Angus for reading that into the record I don't want I don't want to direct to be in direct with uh, notification with the district directors the PCs thank you supervisor Angus for reading that into the record that's not my job so that's not my job. So, That's not my job. So. so what she did was she read Barbara Carpenter's letter, but she shot Carrie Asel down because that's what she does. Whatever benefits Hilde Angus, she'll go for. Whatever doesn't benefit her, she will reject it, and she will reject it in a very strong manner, showing herself to be a very biased person. Um, Hilde Angus actually wants to have it both ways. The chairwoman who tried to censor three people in our party, three Republicans, for speaking out against her. Yes. GOP chairwoman we yes. have ever had and, I, and she's under attack yes. by our own party. So this is what a crook Hilde Angus truly is. She goes up into a crowd of people and speaks in front of a group of people and tells them that Jeannie Kench the chairwoman is the best chairwoman she has ever come across in her career but she fails to tell the crowd of people that the reason why the Republican Party is attacking Jeannie Kench is because Jeannie Kench filed three illegal workplace harassment injunctions against her own party members. So when you are listening to a crooked politician like Hilde Angus, do not believe anything that comes out of her mouth 
because she will twist it just like she twisted the story about Jeannie Kench. Jeannie Kench needs to be removed as far as being the chairwoman of the MCRCC because of what she did. She took her own party members to court to have them silenced, therefore violating the United States Constitution and specifically the First Amendment. Can you imagine the damage that would do in public discourse? Can and that's what this person right here is stands for herself. She stands for censorship. Ask people what they stand for. And she wants to be a senator. Yeah, in my book, that's pretty insulting. There's absolutely no way any freedom-loving American citizen should ever support somebody like this person. My opinion. Talk about misinformation on the Republican Party. Everything's on tape, video. Appropriate to me. I didn't uh, think that would need to come up during this election, but I'm not going to allow her to go out there and spew lies against me either. It's absolutely ridiculous and shame on her. Okay. And she's under attack. Yes. By our own party. Yeah. I'm tired of Jeannie Kench taking off our PCs without even talking to us. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. You and Jeannie Kench needs to resign. That will fix it. And it's up to me as to who goes on and off the list. It's Three years ago, I walked into the office of a businessman here in Bullhead City to sell a Lincoln Day ticket. And he looked at me and he told me that the GOP was dead in Bullhead City. And I said, really? Well, I'm here now. And that man looked at me, and he laughed in my face. Now, I'm never the smartest person in the room. And when you are a military man, and you have served this country in the military capacity, and you are backing or you are associated with anybody who is trying to violate anybody else's freedom to speak, People want to be elected because they want to be something. Yeah. So just be careful about that and yeah. ask people what they stand for. Then what you are is a bird of a feather, okay? And birds of a feather always flock together. So, so much for this person's patriotism, so much for this person's freedom. I see he wears an American flag on his lapel. Um, well, you know what? You can't have it both ways. You are either for America's freedoms or you are going to stand with people who are trying to violate American citizens' freedom to speak. And we're not against dissension and, and free speech, but we're against tearing down what's already there. Well, we have Travis Lingenfelter here. He's currently the chairman of the Mojave County Board of Supervisors. I'm gonna call him up a little later. We're pretty much cut from the same cloth. With this team, with Leo Biasucci and John Gillette, and with Sonny there. What, who, who's gonna take your spot in Bullhead City? Is someone gonna run for that? Well, Grace Hecht is here and she's running. She's running that. And there's, there's another person, but that's why Sonny endorses me and so does John and Leo. What's their platform? What's their experience? So I want to bring up Travis Lingenfelter because we are having battles at the, at the county. Up to us, it's the First Amendment freedom of speech, uh, freedom of assembly, I'm sorry. I'm here today to make some corrections to the record from the November 6th meeting. Thank you, Supervisor Angus, for reading that into the record. That's not my job. That's not my job. That's not my job.